Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today we'll be installing one of the most popular and one of the best Linux based operating systems and I'm talking about Ubuntu. Ubuntu is really popular and it is really great. So if you're planning to switch to Linux, you should try Ubuntu, see if you like it. It has a lot of cool features. It's got a very cool design as well as it has really good software repositories. So you can count on Ubuntu to have all the software that you need. All right, without further ado, let's get started. and. If you're new to the channel, please take a second to subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss new videos, and if you find this video helpful, give it a like. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so the first step, we need to go to any browser, then go to the search field and type Ubuntu. The first search result is going to take you to the ubuntu.com, then click on the download. This is the Ubuntu website. You can look through this website. There is a lot of information about Ubuntu. It shows you there is Ubuntu server, Ubuntu cloud, Ubuntu flavors. So you can choose different things from Ubuntu website, but let's go ahead and click Ubuntu desktop. It's gonna take us to the download Ubuntu desktop. As you can see, the current version of Ubuntu is 22.04 LTS. And LTS means it's a long-term support version. So it will be supported for at least five years. I do recommend downloading the LTS version because it gives you great support and you don't have to reinstall this operating system every year. The regular version, I think it has support only for nine months. So if you're not planning to reinstall it every nine months, then I recommend getting the LTS version. Then you can be sure that you're gonna get support and updates for at least five years. As you can see, Ubuntu is pretty large operating system. It has very nice graphical design. It has a lot of software pre-bundled a lot of drivers. This is why the size of this ISO image is 3.4 gigabyte, which is really big. For example, Linux Mint is like 1.8 gigabyte, I believe, and some other Linux based operating system, they're like less than one gigabyte. So this is the thing about Ubuntu desktop. If you install it on an older computer that doesn't have as powerful hardware, then I recommend getting Lubuntu. This is a lightweight Ubuntu and it can work almost on any hardware. I have another video how to install Lubuntu on your computer. So if you wanna check it out, I'll put a link in the description and you can also check it out by the link in the upper right corner. All right, so the download is complete. Let's go ahead and flash it onto the USB stick. For that, we're gonna need Balena Etcher or you can use other flashing software but I recommend using Balena Etcher. It seems to be working fine. If you don't have it, just go to the search browser again and type in Balena Etcher. Then the first search result that we're gonna get is gonna take us to the Balena Etcher homepage. So click download for Windows. If you have a Windows operating system, you can choose to download for other operating systems if you use another operating system, but I got Windows 64 bit, so I'll just download it for this. Then go ahead and click on the downloaded program, the exe file. So you just got to accept the agreement. It's going to start installing automatically. After that, go ahead and run Balena Etcher. This program has a very simple minimalistic design, so it's easy to use. Go ahead and click fresh from file. Then from downloads, click the Ubuntu image that we have downloaded. Then click select target. Choose the USB drive that you want this ISO to be flashed on and click flash. That's it. It's going to start flashing automatically. You don't have to change any other settings. So it's gonna start the flashing process. It might take a few minutes because it's pretty large image. It's gonna probably take longer than average ISO to flash. But anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward it to save some time. And I'm gonna see you when we're gonna start the installation process. All right, so the flashing is almost complete. After that, it's gonna start validating the image, making sure it has been flashed properly. After the validating is complete, you can go ahead and close this window and then remove the USB stick. If you're planning to install it on this computer, just go ahead and restart it. If you're planning to install it on a different machine, just plug in the USB stick into the machine, turn it on. You might have to press F8 when the computer starts to be able to choose the device that you wanna start booting from. As you can see, I have a few different devices available for booting. I just need to choose the USB stick that I have the ISO on, and this is gonna be the UEFI Jet Flash Transcend 16 gigabyte. Just choose the USB stick that you have flashed the ISO and press enter. After that, choose try or install Ubuntu. So press enter. It's going to start loading Ubuntu from the USB stick. So you can actually try it to see if you like it. If you like it and you want to install it permanent on your computer. So you have both operating system. For example, I'm going to have Windows 10 and Ubuntu on the same computer. Also, if you just plan to install brand new Ubuntu on the computer as a single operating system, you can do that as well. 
All right, so Ubuntu is loading. It's gonna start in a few seconds. And actually what I noticed about this new version of Ubuntu is it is a bit slow. Like before other versions were faster. Now it takes much longer to actually start every program. So hopefully they will fix it later. All right, so Ubuntu has started. As you can see, we're getting the welcome screen. So here you can choose whether you wanna try Ubuntu or you wanna install Ubuntu. Since we're gonna be installing Ubuntu, we just got to choose the language and then click install Ubuntu. After that, you need to choose the keyboard layout. I'm just going to choose English and press continue. The next thing we need to choose whether we want to install updates in other software. We can choose either normal installation or minimal installation. I recommend doing the normal installation. Then you're going to have everything already pre-installed. And then for the other options, you can choose to download updates while installing Ubuntu and also the very important step is install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. This means that during the installation process, Ubuntu will automatically locate and find the proper graphics card drivers and Wi-Fi adapter drivers. So you have a good experience once the installation is complete. If you don't choose this option, then you'll have to do it manually and you may not get the great experience right after the installation because if you don't have the proper graphics card driver, your screen resolution might be too big or it might be just slow overall. If you don't have the Wi-Fi adapter driver, then you're not gonna have the Wi-Fi. And if you don't have the cable connection through the ethernet cable, then you will not have internet at all. So I highly recommend checking that box, install third-party software and press continue. On the next step, you can choose the installation type. So this computer currently has Linux Mint 20.3 Uno and actually it also has Windows 10 installed as well. So you can choose to install Ubuntu alongside with other operating system or you can erase disk and install Ubuntu. This is going to be a fresh install where it's going to format the drive and it's going to install Ubuntu as the only operating system on the computer. But like I said, I have Linux Mint already installed on my computer and I also have Windows 10 installed on my computer. So I'm going to have three operating systems. So I'm going to choose something else. On the next window, I'm just going to find the partition that I have already prepared for Ubuntu. I have allocated a 100 gigabyte partition for this operating system. If you don't have it yet, you're going to have to prepare it prior to this. I have already done this. Once the partition is prepared, go ahead and choose the partition that you want to install Ubuntu on. The use as should be set to ext4 journaling file system. The mounting point should be the forward slash. Then also check the box format the partition and click OK. It will tell you that the partition will be formatted and it will remove all the data from that partition. There we go. So the format is done. As you can see, the type has been changed to ext4. After that, go ahead and click install now. It will show you the warning once again. So press continue. After that, you can choose your location, then press continue. On the next step, you can type computer name. So your name, I'll just put Ubuntu. Then you can pick a username. We'll just stick with Ubuntu. Then you got to choose the password. And there are a few options you can choose from. You can choose to log in automatically. If you don't want the operating system to ask you for the password every time you log in, I'm just going to do that. Or you can set to require my password for every login. So it's good if you know that somebody else might be using your computer. But since this is going to be a demonstration version for me, I'm just going to skip that and I'm going to choose login automatically and press continue. OK, so now the installation has started, so it will take a few minutes before it's finished, depending how powerful your computer is. I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward it to the finish and then we're going to see once it's fully installed so you can see how it looks. Once the installation is complete, it's going to pop up a dialog box saying the installation complete. Just click restart now. And it will tell you to remove the installation medium and press enter. As you can see in this step, it shows you all the operating system that you have currently installed on the computer. And I have three different operating systems installed. I have Linux Mint, I have Windows 10 and I have Ubuntu installed on this computer. I know this is probably overkill to have so many operating systems on one computer. If for some reason it doesn't work, we're going to have to update the GRUB loader. And how to do that, you can check out in my other video where I was shown how to install Pop! OS. So it is very simple. You just got to run a few commands through the terminal. So I'm going to put a link to that video as well so you can check it out if you're having some issues with the GRUB loader. But if everything works good, you don't have to worry about it. All right, so after the reboot, you can choose Ubuntu. 
as you can see, is going to be the first one in line. All right, there we go. Ubuntu has started. As you can see, this is what I was talking about when I was saying that the graphic card drivers are not installed properly. As you can see, it has a really bad screen resolution. It's too big. And this means that the drivers are not installed properly. So we're going to have to fix that. So if that happens to you as well, just go ahead and click show applications, then go to settings, then go to display. As you can see, the resolution is 1024 by 768. And this screen is Quad HD, so I'm really losing on resolution. So as you can see, there are software and updates, so we need to install additional drivers. I seem to have this problem with my GTX 980 Ti. I don't know why, it's, maybe it's an old graphic card or something like that, but I always get that problem with Linux operating systems. Even though it says proprietary and tested, as you can see, it doesn't work for some reason. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm just gonna pick a different driver. Try to pick the most recent driver. As you can see, this driver from NVIDIA, I have 510. So I'm just gonna pick a different one and then just click restart. It seems to me like it doesn't really matter which one you choose, but no matter what, after you restart it, it will start looking like this. There you have it guys, this is Ubuntu operating system for you. So this is how it looks, it looks great. For some reason it's not as fast as I thought it would be, like the newest version seems to be pretty slow, but it still looks great. It works pretty smooth, I really like the way it looks. It has a lot of software that you can use. And you can do a lot of customization with this operating system as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more interesting, cool Linux videos. And if you have any questions, comments, drop, drop them down in the comment section below. All right, this is it, guys. I hope you enjoy your day and see you soon. Bye-bye.